We start this evening with the downing of a Russian military plane just outside of Syria's Latakia, which took the lives of 15 Russian service members. Russian President Vladimir Putin has responded, calling it a chain of tragic circumstances. RT's Yulia Shapovalova has the latest. The Russian Defense Ministry has said Israel is to blame for the downing of a Russian military plane off the coast of Syria. It claims the Israeli Air Force used the IL-20 as cover for airstrikes from Syrian air defenses. Syrian missiles in turn hit the Russian plane. Fifteen crew members died as a result. Four Israeli fighter jets had been targeting Syrian facilities in Latakia province at the time. On the 17th of September at around 10 p.m., four Israeli fighter jets launched guided bombs on Syrian military facilities near the city of Latakia. The bombing occurred in the immediate vicinity of where the Russian IL-20 was coming into land. The Israeli jets deliberately created a dangerous situation. The Israeli pilots used the Russian plane as cover against the Syrian air defense systems. As a result, the Russian IL-20 was brought down by a Syrian air defense missile. There's no way the Israeli pilots could not have seen the Russian plane. The incident took place above the Mediterranean Sea, 35 kilometers off the Syrian coast. The Russian jet was returning to the Khmeimim Air Base. This IL-20 patrol aircraft is known by NATO as the Kut. It has a top speed of 675 kilometers per hour and has a wingspan of around 37 meters. Renowned for its durability, the IL-20 has been in service since the Soviet Union. Israel has confirmed strikes on Syrian territory and regretted the death of the Russians. But it insists Syria Iran and the armed group Hezbollah are to blame for the downing of the jet. Vladimir Putin added that the incident was the consequence of a tragic chain of events. Our position on this incident was presented in a Ministry of Defense statement, which was fully coordinated with me. About our response, first, we will use all our forces to provide even more security for the Russian military in Syria. And this will cover all other measures. The Israeli and Russian president spoke on the phone and extended their condolences to the families of the plane's crew. Meanwhile, Russia's foreign ministry summoned the Israeli deputy ambassador over the incident. She stayed there about half an hour and refused to comment on the exit. Some of the remains of the crew, along with personal belongings, have been located in the Mediterranean Sea, where the IL-20 came down. The search and rescue operation is still underway. Yulia Shpavalova, RT. For more, we're joined by Philip Giraldi, former CIA officer and counterterrorism specialist. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. It was a Syrian air defense that brought down the military plane, but the Russian Defense Ministry blames Israel. Why is that? Well, I think the, the explanation by the defense minister was pretty clear. The Israelis were using the Russian plane, which they knew was there, as cover for their own advance uh, to uh, strike targets in Syria. And uh, I think what they were expecting was that with the Russian plane in the air, the Syrian air defenses would not fire and would not obviously threaten the Israeli airplanes. And I, I think that was their thinking. But unfortunately, as, as in many cases, something always goes wrong. And in this case, the, uh, whether the uh, transponder on the Russian plane was turned off or not, uh, the uh, Syrians obviously responded to the uh, Israeli jets. And uh, th this is what happens. Well, how will Russian and Israeli ties suffer from this incident? Well, uh, I think that, um, that President Putin, in spite of his conciliatory language, has to do something. I think that uh, uh, the Israelis, uh, having staged more than 200 air attacks on Syria, a country with which it's not at war, uh, uh, threatens the Russian presence in the country. So I think there has to be some kind of quid pro quo that will have to be worked out between the two defense ministries to make sure this does not happen again. Do you feel like that uh, working out will be something that they can do diplomatically or something that will require more of a military presence or military action? I think probably it is something that will be done diplomatically and more than that at the, uh, the level of uh, heads of government. Uh, that means Mr. Putin and Netanyahu will probably be discussing this issue in some detail. Well, it's interesting because President Putin says the downing was tragic and accidental, the words you use, and it indicates that leaders want to de-escalate the tensions between the two. Do you agree with this? Well, I think that if, unless the Russians want to continue to be a target of, of, uh, of Israel attacks, uh, Israeli attacks, I think they have to work out some kind of uh, mechanism that stops this from happening. 
Clearly, the uh, hotline that they had established did not work. Uh, the Israelis called uh, only one minute before the attack, and uh, obviously the airplane was already uh, in target range of the Syrian air defenses. So it was uh, not a good system. Something better has to be worked out. Uh, I think that uh, both Putin and Netanyahu will find it in their interest to do so. Well, exactly. And Putin added that Moscow will boost security and defenses in Syria. Uh, those would be the steps that everyone will notice. What do you think those specific steps would look like on the ground? Well, I think um, President Putin would be well advised, and I'm sure he's already doing this, um, to upgrade air defenses, uh, the specific uh, mobile units uh, that could be deployed more around the Russian base uh, to, and also around where Russian u uh, units are operating. And if the Israelis dare to make an attack by air, I think uh, the order will be given to shoot them down. Philip, thank you for joining us, and I'm sure this story will continue to develop. Hey, YouTube, thanks for checking out our channel. We hope you enjoyed the video. We have tons of content for you just like this. For more of RT America's one-of-a-kind news and analysis, be sure to subscribe and never stop questioning more.